Well, hello, third grade students, parents at home as well. It's Mr. Dale here. And I would just like to say how happy I am and proud I am of all the students and their work with the spider essay. And we spent a lot of time on that spider essay and we put a lot of work into it, but the final outcome was really well done. And I'm so proud of the effort, the work that they did into putting into it. But I would like to spend just a little bit more time looking at writing an essay and how to write an essay well. And to do that, we're going to look at the steps. We're going to look at brainstorming, getting ideas onto paper, graphic organizer, how to organize those ideas. We're going to look at paragraph structure. How should we structure and build our paragraphs properly for an essay? We're going to look at introductory and concluding paragraphs. They're very important paragraphs in our essay. And then finally, we'll put it all together and see how the final product looks. Well, a lot of students ask me, what is an essay? And for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the five-paragraph essay. And the five-paragraph essay is really what students will be doing through much of their uh, educational lives. But an essay really is a writing that closely examines a topic. And essays can examine and explain many different things. Uh, there's expository essays. Here the writer gives information about a topic with details and examples. And this is essentially what we did with our spider essay. And I'm so proud of the work that they did and the details and the examples they gave. It was very well done. We also have procedural essays. Here the writer gives information about materials and steps needed to do an activity. We did this one very briefly, but we might do more of it as the year progresses. There's also a personal narrative where the writer tells a personal story and a persuasive essay where the writer tries to persuade the reader to do something and think in a certain way. Well, let's just take a few minutes to look at an essay at a glance. And the five paragraph essay does indeed have five paragraphs. It's going to begin with an introductory paragraph. It will contain the three main body paragraphs where all of the information is put. And it will uh, also contain a concluding paragraph or a conclusion paragraph. Now when I write an essay, and I also tell the students it's very important, I like to start with the three main body paragraphs. Why? Once you have these three body paragraphs done and done well, you know exactly what you need to put in the introductory paragraph and the concluding paragraph. Remember, the introductory paragraph needs to introduce these three main ideas. And if you haven't done this well, you really don't know what you're introducing. So I always tell my students, it's important to do these first and do them well. So the introductory paragraph introduces the main idea of this whole essay. You will also introduce these three ideas. Now the concluding paragraph is similar. It will con conclude or summarize these three main ideas. And quite, I quite often, um, the main point or the main argument from each of these ideas will be used in the concluding paragraph. Remember, quite often the reader will remember the information in the concluding paragraph the most. So you want to finish your essay strong. You want to use great arguments in the concluding paragraph. And we will be looking at examples of how this looks. Well, once students have thought of a topic, they're going to need to brainstorm ideas and organize them. So they're going to be thinking, what is my main idea? What do I want to tell about, promote? describe. Once they have this main idea in their mind, then they're going to start wondering and thinking about details that will support that main idea. How should they organize the paragraphs properly? Well, I like to use a graphic organizer and I also intend to uh, get the students to make one as well. Now you put your main idea here. This is going to be the whole idea of the essay. And these three boxes will represent those three main body paragraphs that we talked about. So you're going to have a supporting idea to support this main idea. But within each of those body paragraphs, you will have three supporting details. So really the magic number in a five paragraph essay should be three. Because you will have three supporting ideas. And each supporting idea will be supported by three details or three supporting details. And we'll look at an example of how this will work. 
Well, remember we talked about persuasive essay, where the writer tries to persuade the reader to do something or think in a certain way? Let's look at an example essay and go through the steps. And the steps we will follow are, we're going to first think of a topic that, you, that we want to persuade the reader to agree with. We're then going to put ideas into our graphic organizer. We're going to brainstorm supporting details to support each of those ideas. Uh, we're going to write our ideas into sentence form. Remember, in the graphic organizer, we really don't have complete sentences. We may have words or ideas, but now we need to get them into sentence form. Then we're going to think of an introductory sentence and a concluding sentence for each of our paragraphs. Well, persuasive essay. I decided I was going to persuade the reader that living in the country is better than living in the city. And I need three supporting ideas to support this main idea. And here they are. First I thought, you know, there's less pollution. There's more to play with. And it's safer. So in my graphic organizer, as I get my ideas, I'm just going to start writing these ideas. I don't need sentences. I don't need even complete ideas. I just need words. And I need to start guiding my thought process in this direction. I know I want ideas for less pollution. I know I need more ideas for it to play with and the safer. Well, here's my first idea, less pollution. Okay, and I need details to support this. Here they are. Well, the first thing I thought of is there's not so many cars. That's a reason there's less pollution. There aren't many factories. Again, that's supporting this idea that there's less pollution and there's more plants to give oxygen. I'm supporting this main idea with these supporting details. I also said there was more to play with. I need to support that with three supporting details. Here they are. You can play outside. Now there's nature and more area for exercise. Again, these three are supporting this main idea that it's there's more to play with. And I also said it's safer, but I need to support that with some ideas and details, even examples. Well, there's not as many busy roads. And there's not as many dangerous people in the country and it's a cleaner environment. Well, I essentially have the body paragraphs of my essay finished. Remember, there's three body paragraphs. I have all of the ideas. I have them organized in the order I want. Now I need to start moving those ideas into sentence and paragraph form. So once students have their ideas in the graphic organizer, they need to put their ideas into sentence, paragraph form. Well, every paragraph will have this structure or this shape. Every paragraph needs an introductory sentence. That's super important. An introductory sentence will tell the reader what the whole paragraph is about. It will be followed by three details that support this introductory sentence, and it will end with a concluding sentence. A lot of people ask what an introductory sentence looks like. Well, I think this visual is a great description of it. It shows us what will happen in the paragraph. So the topic sentence introduces the main idea of the paragraph. And it will be supported by three details or examples. The introductory sentence should. These are things that the introductory sentence should do. They should clearly explain what the paragraph will be about. However, the topic sentence should not should not give specific details or examples. Remember, the details or examples, they were taken care of in the body of the paragraph. And the topic sentence should also not be very long. Well, students quite often find the concluding sentence to be more difficult than the topic sentence, but it really shouldn't be. The concluding sentence is a sentence at the end of the paragraph that will end the paragraph, or tell the reader that the paragraph has finished. So the concluding sentence really is much like the topic sentence. Okay? It's going to be very similar to the topic sentence. You're concluding the idea of the paragraph. And it should summarize the main points of the paragraph. The concluding sentence should not. Again, these are things the concluding sentence should not do. They should not give more details or examples. That was done in the that was done in the in the body of the paragraph. And the concluding sentence should also not be the exact same words as the topic sentence. 
we don't want that in USA. Well, remember I said that I had three main ideas to support this idea that country living is better than city living. Well, now we need to move these ideas into a sentence form. And those sentences will become the introductory sentence for my paragraph. Again, these sentences that I create with this idea will become the introductory sentence for my paragraph. Let's look at what I did or how I did it. Here's the sentence I created. The country is a nicer place to live because there is less pollution. Remember, I always want to point the reader back to my argument or my idea that the country is better than the city. And I'm doing that even in, in the introductory sentences of my paragraph. Here's my second sentence. It is much more fun to live in the country than in the city. Again, I'm pointing the reader back to my argument or my idea. And a country life is usually safer than city life. These are going to become the introductory sentences for my body paragraphs. But we also have details that we have in our, in our paragraphs. And here they are again. Well, I've taken care of the main idea here. All right? I've already got an introductory sentence for my idea, but now I need to start working on these details, the supporting details. And I need to get them into sentence form as well. Well, here we are. Let's read it together. <clears throat> Remember, this is my introductory sentence. So the country is a nicer place to live because there is less pollution. And I have my three supporting detail sentences here. Let's read it together. In the country, there are not as many cars that produce smog. There, are, there also aren't many factories that create smoke. A really nice part of the country is that there are more plants that produce clean air. And here's my concluding sentence. Again, I'm not giving more details or examples. I'm just concluding that paragraph. Clean, fresh air. There's the main idea that I want people to remember about that paragraph. Clean, fresh air is a great reason to want to live in the country. I did the same with my second paragraph. I put my supporting details into sentences. I got my introductory sentence. And I got my concluding sentence. And there's my third paragraph. Let's look at it together. Country life is usually safer than city life. Here's my introductory sentence. I need to support it with my details. There they are. There really are not as many busy roads in the country. Another safe part of the country is that usually there are not as many dangerous people around. These are my ideas, but in sentence form. Finally, here's a great transition word. Finally, the environment is usually cleaner and healthier in the country. Let's look at my concluding sentence. Being outside with nature and enjoying the outdoors is a great way to live. Again, I'm using the main idea from my details to kind of conclude my paragraph. Well, here's the body paragraphs of my essay. They're all done. Okay, there's my first idea. My second idea. And my third idea. These are going to be the body paragraphs of my essay. The body part of my essay is nearly finished. Now let's look at the introductory paragraph. And it has two functions. The introductory paragraph is going to main, uh, introduce the main idea of the essay. It will also introduce the three main ideas. Now this is an important part. Introduce the main idea of the essay. The first sentence of the introductory paragraph will clearly introduce the main idea of the whole essay. It will also introduce the three main topics or ideas later. So let's look at the introductory paragraph and the topic sentence a little bit closer. Remember I said the first line or the first sentence of the introductory paragraph is important? Here's why. It should clearly introduce the idea of the whole essay. It should also be very interesting to make people want to read that essay. So let's repeat that. The introductory paragraph is very important. The first sentence of the introductory paragraph clearly identifies the purpose or reason of that whole essay. So the introductory paragraph will introduce these three ideas. Okay, they're going to take the ideas that we have here, and they're going to put it down and introduce these three ideas. 
let's look at the introductory paragraph that I created. Here is that topic sentence that I said was really important. The whole idea of my essay can be summarized in this sentence. If you want to really enjoy life, it is better to live in the country than the city. And the reader will be expecting. Why? Well, here is why. And these are my supporting details or my supporting ideas. First, remember we talked about those body paragraphs. First, the country has less pollution. There's my pollution idea. Second, it is much more fun to play in the country. Finally, the country is usually safer than the city. Those three ideas are the main body paragraphs of my essay. Here's my concluding sentence. Living in the country gives us a much better life. So I have an introductory sentence. I introduce my main three topics or my three main body paragraphs. And then I have a concluding sentence. Well, the concluding paragraph is similar. It will summarize or conclude the main points of the three main ideas that we talked about. So the concluding paragraph will summarize the three main ideas of the essay. Often, the most important point from each of the body, par body paragraphs is used in the conclusion paragraph. That means whatever you thought was most important about idea one will be con used in the conclusion of, of uh, idea one and two and three. Well, here's the concluding paragraph that I wrote. And the concluding paragraph also has an introduction sentence. It also has a concluding sentence. Here is my introductory sentence. There are so many reasons why the country is a better place to live than the city. Okay, the pollution from cars and factories isn't as bad. This was probably the biggest thing or the main thing that I thought was important about body paragraph number one. You can have fun playing in the open spaces outside. There is number two. You also can play more safely outside without worrying about dangerous people all around you. That was idea three, or body paragraph three. So I have the idea from body paragraph one summarized. I have the idea from body paragraph two summarized. And I have body paragraph three summarized here. And there's my concluding sentence. Living in the country gives us a much better life. Well, let's put it all together. Once students have their ideas well organized in the graphic organizer, once their graphic organizer is, is well done and looks good, they're going to write a rough draft. And the rough draft will be really a first attempt at their essay. But it will definitely have mistakes. That's the point of a rough draft. They're going to be looking for paragraph indents. So they're going to fix the mistakes that they make in the rough draft. The student forgot a, an indent. They're going to look for spelling mistakes like this student did. They're going to try and fix all of those mistakes in the rough draft. Use a dictionary. Use you know, what you know about grammar. Okay. Check for good sentence structure. Do you have a subject and a verb? Do you have it well done? Once the rough draft is finished, they're going to be working on putting it into a final draft. The final draft can be written, and there should not be any mistakes in the final draft. The essay is essentially finished. And I really hope students have enjoyed this little tutorial and parents at home maybe. And we look forward to using some of these ideas in class and as we continue our writing into the year. I thank all parents and students for the time that I to listen. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Mr. Dale, thank you very much.